Hello everyone, welcome to another Coding Fundamentals in GML tutorial. My name is Sam Spade, and in this tutorial I'll be giving a short overview on the debugger. If you've been following along with these tutorials, you're probably familiar at least a little bit with the debugger as I've been using it in most of them. It's a built-in tool that GameMaker gives us for debugging our code. It is incredibly powerful and has almost no downsides. In fact, about the only downside it has is that it takes your program a little bit longer to compile. The amount of time this saves you in debugging your code and learning about your code is well worth that extra time. Not only can the debugger help you debug your code, it can also help you understand how your code works. In the introduction to debugging tutorial, I said that the three general parts of debugging are understanding what's wrong, isolating the code, and understanding how your code is working. The debugger is great at those second two things. It not only helps you to isolate the code, it lets you walk through the code in a variety of different ways to really just see step by step what is happening with the code that you wrote. And this is great not only at debugging, but also just to help you learn how your code functions. If I'm writing new code, I will often just run it in the debugger and step through that code once or twice to make sure that it's functioning how I expect it to. This has not only reduced the amount of bugs that I've created or, or helped me catch them you know, on the very first time I run, it's given me a much better understanding of how GameMaker works and how code works in general. I really can't stress it enough. If you take away nothing else from this entire tutorial series, not just this tutorial, but this entire tutorial series, use the debugger way more. You will likely save yourself hours in time and frustration. It is without a doubt your best debugging resource and you should be using it regularly. So what can it do? It can step through your code. It can monitor instances and variable in semi real time. It can monitor memory usage, shows you how fast your program is running, how many frames per second. You can profile performance so you can see where this program is running slowly. You can view surfaces and textures and so much more than that. As I said, this is just going to be a brief overview because a full in-depth tutorial on the debugger would take a very long time. So I'm going to talk about just a few basic things. First, real-time debugging. You do have to enable this, but it allows you to monitor your instances, your variables in semi-real-time. I say semi-real-time because the debugger only updates a couple times a second. Uh, it's not going to catch anything that's super fast. And of course, even if it could, it would be gone instantly because it's always updating, so you're not going to see it. So it is real-time debugging, but it's only helpful for things that are going to be there for at least a second or so. Which brings us to the second way you can use the debugger, which is you can pause the debugger and then step through the code or review instances and variables and so on. When you pause the debugger, you can step into the code, you can step over the code, and you can step out of the code. And we're going to give examples of all of those. In order to pause the debugger, you can click the pause button or you can set a breakpoint. To set or unset a breakpoint, you can use F9 or click in the margins on the line of code that you want to set the breakpoint on. You can also toggle breakpoints on and off. Now, obviously, you can just unset a breakpoint and it will be gone, but there's a tab where you can toggle the breakpoint off so the breakpoint still exists, but it won't be triggered in the debugger. So let's switch over to GameMaker Studio 2 and see examples of all of this. Before running the debugger, I'm going to walk through the things that are here. So we have our debugger instance, which is going to create some global variables and also some instance variables. Note that we have a breakpoint already set here. We can click on and off, and we can also use F9 to turn it on or off. Note that with F9, if you have a line of code selected, it will go on that line. Even if my mouse is over here, it's gonna go over here. So F9 puts the breakpoint on the line of code you have selected. So I have a breakpoint set here, and then in the step event of this object, I actually have two breakpoints. So this step event simply increases a number and if that number hits the max, resets the number to zero. This is just so we can see something happening in the debug. If we push space, it'll use a custom function to print the output of my value to this window. And I'm using the custom function here so we can step into it and see some local variables and some other things in action in the debug. We also have a couple of these objects scattered around the room. They just have some variables and they also increment the value and then we'll reset to zero once it hits the max, just so we can see a couple other things happening when we run the debugger. Okay, so let's run the debugger. All right, so as usual, we've stopped on our breakpoint. 
I'm going to come over here to the variables tab and we can see all of our global variables created over here. Notice that we can also see all of our instances. We'll talk a little bit more about event order in another tutorial, but you can see that all of the instances exist, but they haven't actually had their create events run yet. So we're running the create event for object debugger right now. And you can see those variables now pop up in the instances tab. One thing I want to note is that your setup might not look exactly like this. I've customized it a little. When you run the debugger, you can come up here to this drop down window. You can see all of the windows and you can get one and you can put it down here. These are the four that I use. I normally have all four of them available right here so I can monitor my global variables, all of the instances that exist, the specific instance selected and any local variables as well. So now we're going to unpause the debugger with our continue button over here and it's going to immediately stop on the step event. Now I'm not going to step through this just yet. What I'm going to show you is that because it's on the step event, this is going to be kind of annoying because it's going to stop here every step. That would be very hard to debug a game unless this is exactly what you were trying to do. So we can switch over to this breakpoints tab We can come over here. We can say, all right, this is the step event line five breakpoint. Let's toggle it off. So you can see we can toggle it on and off and it's still here, but now it's not going to trigger. So now our code is actually running. So I've switched back over to the variables tab and let's talk through a couple more things. So first you can see up here, it's showing us our memory usage and our current frames per second. This is very, very high because we have almost nothing going on. You can see all of our instances that exist right here. We can go to any one of them and we can see them slowly incrementing their value. Again, it's obviously going much faster than this. It's incrementing by one, but it's not updating that fast. It's not updating fast enough to catch that. We can switch over to another one. Again, we can see it updating. And we can switch over to this one. We can see it updating. Another thing you can do is you can pause the debugger. When you pause the debugger, the code is just going to stop wherever it is. When the debugger is paused, you can actually change variables directly. Like we could change this to say, goodbye world. And now this is updated. I don't use this a whole lot. But there are times where it could be very useful. You wouldn't have to recompile your program. You can just change some variables and keep testing. One important thing to note is this does not change the variable in your code. So if we come over here, our create event still says hello world. So even though we've changed it down here, it doesn't change it in your code. Okay, now I'm going to push space. We're going to talk about some other features. So I push space. So we've come into here and we've stopped on this breakpoint. Notice that when we were running our code normally, this breakpoint wasn't firing because we weren't coming into this line. However, when I push space, now we have. So there's a couple things to note. Number one, this instance is selected. So now its variables show up down here. Number two, we've got these three buttons up here. We've got step into, step over, and step out of. So first let's demonstrate step over. If I click this, we will just go to the next line of code. There is no next line of code, so we're just gonna keep going. So in this case, the next line of code is actually in another instance of a different object because there was no additional code here. So we're just moving on. And you can actually step through the entire step event of your entire project just repeatedly. So I just went through all three of those instances step event. Now we're back to this step event. And I could go through this. And now we're going back through all three. And you can see we're actually just looping through everything. And especially in small projects, this can be a great thing to do. You can just step through your step of it over and over and over again and see how everything works. So let's run it again. Let's push space again. All right, now we're going to demonstrate step into. This is the one we normally use. The difference between step over and step into is that if there is a function or something else that would function like a function, like an event call, you will go into that. And now you can see this code. So here is the actual code for our print function. And now you can see a bunch of local variables have shown up as well. We still have all of our instance variables, but we also have our argument values. And when we come down here, we create local variables, they show up here. So we take the variable, uh, the first argument value, my value is, we add it to final text. And we take the next uh, argument value, which is 194. We add that to final text. So now my value is 194. And then we come down here, show debug message, and we're done. And again, now we can just step through everything just like before. So the last one,
that I want to demonstrate is the step out of function. So again, push spacebar, come in here. We're going to go into this function. And now, if we come out of this resource view, we can see that we were running this code in the step event, and we've come into the print function. If we do step out of, it comes back out of that function. There's two important things to note here. The first is that we popped off that script call from the call stack, and we're back to where we are. The second is that it doesn't skip the code. All of the code in the print function ran. In fact, you can see we printed out the value down here. We're just here. So it's not like it is an undo or a back. It doesn't send you back. It just finishes this function and it goes back to wherever you were before you went into that function. In summary, the debugger is your best debugging resource. You should use it frequently. You should remember that you can run it in real time and that you can also pause it either just with the pause button or with breakpoints to inspect variables and step through your code. You can also do so much more. Again, I would strongly recommend checking out the links uh, that I'm going to put down below to Sean Spalding's video on the debugger and to the articles on debugging. So here are the links. They'll be down below. And as always, thanks for watching.